Okay, so uh, let's uh, before I get started singing your praises, Mr. Geltrude, um, I got a little beef with you. Now we met, we met uh, at a tailgate, I believe, and you were peddling uh, cupcakes. Right. And uh, the cupcakes were out of this world. And then all of a sudden, you, you just stopped. You, you got out of the business after you'd already got me addicted. You know, if this accounting thing uh, falls through, you can't be a good dealer because, you know, you're supposed to always be there for me. Yeah, I hear you. Sorry <laughs> you probably, about that. You probably saved me some, uh, some calories. Uh, okay, so you were a, uh, you're a New Jersey guy. Uh, got your undergrad at Ryder. Master's at uh, FDU, FDU uh, Fairleigh Dickinson. And then you got your master's at Penn State, which is your Penn State connection. Uh, other than uh, your brother played soccer here at Penn State, right? Yes. Uh, and what was the uh, – tell me about the genesis of the Gulf True Company. So we started in 1995, and I started as a sole practitioner. And my primary motivation was is I wanted to be in business for myself. So being I was an accountant, it seemed right. to make a heck of a lot of sense for me to start an accounting practice. And that's what I did. So over the last, well, what is it now? 29 years? Is that right? My Time math? is flying. <laughs> Time is flying. Well, 95, Time is yeah, flying. well, you have to do it on the fly. Actually, 24 years, what am I saying? So during that period of time, BA, we've grown pretty substantially. So now... We're at the point where we actually have 30 people working here. You know, wow. and it takes a lot of uh, commitment and a lot of effort, a lot of passion. And uh, you, you got to want to do right by people and your clients. Yeah, you know, I love uh, this is I didn't know that you had done this, but uh, your catchphrase is delivering positive financial karma. If you look on my Facebook page, I call myself the ambassador of positive energy. So I, I really like that. And I'm sure that's what your clients are feeling from you. Well, I hope that's what they're feeling from <laughs> me. And just as a side note, on February 15th, I am launching my book which is actually called Positive Financial Karma. Oh, nice. All right. Well, I'll, I'm def is it going to be available on Amazon? And yes, it will. Oh, you're big time. Okay, so um, you, you start your company, and you, uh, you do a lot of corporate and, and wealth management. One of the things I love is that you're not just a CPA. At one point, you had your Series 7, uh, and I'm not sure if you still – do life health, but all those things um, come into play when people need to decide on how to manage their money and things like that. Uh, so what, what I wanted to kind of like drill you with is just some questions about some general tips that can help people out. Um, and, you know, when you're advising, and this would run the gamut for anyone who's, you know, uh, on a lower tax bracket or a higher tax bracket. In general, let's just talk about a little bit what they should be looking at, assets, income, budgets, that kind of thing. Well, to start with, BA, the, the game is always to try to pay as little taxes as you possibly can. And let me emphasize, legally. Legally, right? yes. I don't know how you look in stripes, but I know I don't look so. <laughs> yeah, and I, mean, I think we're both too pretty. <laughs> hey, we're both too pretty for that. <laughs> so, you know, and the only way to know how you're going to end up from a tax perspective is, is to have some type of budget. And I think where people really fall down in terms of managing their finances is, is that they, they never list their assets and their liabilities. Assets meaning what you own, liabilities meaning what you owe. That gives you your net worth. So you really have to have an idea of where you stand. Hey, what am I worth? Doesn't that make sense? Of course it does. Yes. The other side of the equation is to make sure that you know what your income and expenses are. And that's where budgeting comes in. Because it's really easy to say, hey, I have this much coming in in terms of dollars. Right. But I got this credit card here that lets me go beyond what I have in dollars. Right. And that's where people get jammed up, EA. And I really think having a budget in terms of being able to play within the boundaries of your financial fortitude right. is really important. Remember, we're not the government. 
we can't print our own money legally, mm -hmm. right? Not yet. Again, yes. <laughs> so we have to be careful in terms of how we manage what we're spending. And it always comes down to spending issues. And people. Right. Well, something that I think a lot of people can relate to is that their 401ks. What kind of advice do you have uh, on that? Maximize it. Put as much as you possibly can into your 401k as early as you can, BA, because when it comes to savings, time is on your side. And I can give you a quick example. Please Let's do. Say it, at 27 years old, you put away $500 a month. Let's assume that you'll get 7% on that money. By the time you retire at age 67, you would have accumulated $1.3 million. Okay? That's a big That's number. Bad. Now, let's say you come up with a plan and say, all right, I'm going to wait it out. And 20 years later, at 47, you're going to put $1,000 a month away for the next 20 years at 7% and see how you do. Because in the end, you've put away the same, you've contributed the same amount of money. However, you'll only have a little bit over $500,000 doing it that way. That's a huge Time difference. Is on your side. And yep. let's remember, too, 401k, you have employer matches. So now you're getting free money. It's hard right. to get away from. And when I, you know, watching you on Cavuto, I always see you harping on, always make sure that the company's match matches, right? That's right. You know, our company does a lot of auditing of pension plans. And you would be surprised how many times contributions are made late or the contributions are not made at all by the company. And that's your responsibility to try to check for that. So you should be looking at your monthly statements, not just that your money's getting in there, but the employer's money's getting in as well. Right. So with the 401k, it's going in pre-tax money. When, when a person accesses it later in life, um, how do you handle that? Because I'm guessing they may be in a higher tax bracket or do you like, do they kind of sometimes roll it over into something that they can um, change over into an after tax? Well, actually, the concept is, is by the time you start to pull that money out, you're in retirement, so your earnings are lower. So if, if it really worked out in a perfect world, BA, uh -huh. you would be taking the tax-free money or tax-deferred money, putting it in when you're in a higher tax bracket, pulling it out when you're in a lower tax bracket. Right, right. That's that's in the perfect world. All right, got it. Uh, all right, about uh, now, again, I don't like to be negative, but well, let's talk about reality. Um, divorces, what kind of, uh, if someone went through a divorce in 2018, because uh, I'm at that age and I'm seeing it happen, uh, what, what kinds of things that should they look out for? Well, it's an unfortunate uh, truth in life, right, that yes. approximately 50% of people end up divorced. So there was a substantial change with the uh, new tax law that Donald Trump put in place in that in 2018, if you were divorced and your divorce was finalized in 2018, alimony was deductible. Okay. When you paid alimony, you got a, a, a federal deduction for it. At the same time, if you were receiving alimony, it was taxable. Okay. Now, starting in 2019, that's no longer the case. Alimony is not deductible, and the person receiving the alimony does not pay tax on it. Uh -huh. so that's a substantial change. And you want to make sure if you're involved in a divorce settlement that you're aware of that fact because you may be thinking, oh, I'm going to pay alimony. At least I get a tax deduction. That is no longer the case. Right. That's, that's gold right there, Dan. If nothing else comes out of this conversation. Um, and then uh, what about medical expenses? Well, medical expenses also had a change from 2018 into 2019 because of the new tax law. You have a new floor in place. In 2018, you had, in order for medical to be deductible, you had to have it be over 7.5% of your adjusted gross income. Now it's 10%. So less medical expenses are now deductible in 2019. Gotcha. Wow, that's good stuff. Uh, and, and how is this? Uh, you know, I, I like to keep my Facebook uh, non-political, non-religious, but we did have a shutdown, which is a reality. Uh, how is that going to affect tax refunds, do you think? 
Well, right now the government is back to work. So if everything stays as is, I don't think it's going to impact refunds. However, if the government does shut down again after February 15th, which will be in the heart of tax filing season, right. Right, even though the uh, government is ordering IRS workers back to work, I'm not so sure that it won't impact refunds. So I think that we should all keep our fingers crossed right. that the government doesn't shut down again because I think it could have an impact on the timing of refunds. Right, right. Okay, so uh, another tax question, self-employed. You know, obviously I work with realtors and uh, essentially they are self-employed employees. What uh, types of things should they be aware of looking at if, uh, if you're a self-employed slash realtor? Well, if you're self-employed, the new tax law really gave quite a, shall we say, gift in the form of QBI, Qualified Business Income. And what happened was because there was such a substantial tax reduction in the corporate tax rate to the big guys, they wanted to come, come up with something for the little guys like us yeah the little guys like us so you need to so you need to for, for all those realtors out there you need to make your tax preparer aware to simply ask the question hey make sure that i'm going to qualify for qbi the qualified business income deduction oh man Very that's important awesome. that's awesome all right one of the last things is uh the Mike Geltrude Foundation, I'm really big on charities, and I, I wanted to uh, hear a little bit about the foundation, uh, and if you've set a de date yet for this weekend and how people can contribute to it. Well, we haven't, we haven't set the date for this spring yet for our fundraising dinner, uh, which will take place in New Jersey. However, just by way of background, BA, we started the foundation in 2006 after uh, my father had passed away from malignant melanoma. Mm -hmm. And what we found most shocking about that process, which was besides being unfortunate, was that people were not taking skin cancer serious. When he was first diagnosed with skin cancer, my thought was, well, cut it out. It, it can't be that bad. Right. And in 15 months, he was dead. So we felt it was really important to get the word out that people have to go to their dermatologist to get skin screening to make sure that you catch it early because if you do you can cut it out and you're good as new yeah however like every other cancer once it gets in your system and it starts to travel to the major organs then you have a big problem yeah so yeah go ahead i'm sorry our, we take our funds ba and we try to put it into melanoma awareness number one and number two we also make substantial donations to Penn State Hershey to their melanoma center for research wow. because for those who don't catch it in time there's really no cure for melanoma right so research is really important at Penn State Hershey they're doing a lot of great work and that's where we plant our uh, our research dollars right and if you go on the site uh, what's the site again uh, mikegaltrudefoundation.org yeah, and I, the, the video there, you really harp on those youngsters who think they're invincible. I, I, that's, I really like that part of the, the video that you guys showed. Well, many times you are invincible, and here's the thing about being young and invincible when it comes to melanoma. You spend time in the sun wearing no sunscreen, or the worst possible thing you can do is go into a tanning bed, right? And uh -huh. melanoma as I always tell people, never forgets a sunburn. So it lays there dormant until 10, 20, 30 years later, wow. and then the melanoma starts to incubate and come out. Wow, wow. Well, that's, that's great, and I'm, uh, you're doing great things. We all appreciate that. Now, uh, I'm going to finish with, uh, I literally uh, had made sure I had a good tie, but I went out, and I tried to get a tie made with your picture on it, did you? Tie wars. So because you're not wearing a tie, people are going to have to watch you on Cavuto and, and see the battles that you have on almost essentially a weekly basis. Yes, I'll be on. I'll be on on Saturday. So the tie competition will continue. OK, so I mean, is this OK, though? Is it, does yeah, this listen, B.A., I, I did not wear a tie because I don't feel comfortable competing against a first class guy like you. <laughs> oh, you're pretty. I'm, I'm totally outclassed. <laughs> you're so, pretty I surrender. 
Yeah, well, I know you're a busy man, and I really appreciate the time. And all of that stuff is great advice for anybody that's uh, going to be following some taxes. So thanks a lot, Dan. I appreciate it. Thank you, B.A.